Okay, okay, here we are again for another weekend. Sure, after this evening, many of us will enjoy the last days of summer. After all, the rainy days are fast approaching. As usual, before you go on your vacation, let's first have a recap of this past week's hottest news. Like and follow us on our social media sites. We also have a YouTube channel, so please subscribe. We'll give you the latest news reports about Asia and the Philippines. So, what's the cause of delay? Let's now begin our countdown. The Barangay or Village and Sangguni Ang Kabataan or Youth Council elections have just ended last Monday. At last, after a long wait, Filipinos will have new sets of village leaders and young people will have new representatives in the local government. For those who are not so much aware about its importance, the village council serves as the primary governing body for small communities called barangay. The village council takes charge of various community needs such as peace and order and social welfare. So, it's safe to say that being a village leader is also a difficult task. Such is the reason why House Minority Leader Danilo Suarez proposed that village officials be given higher salary and benefits. In a report published by the Philippine Daily Inquirer, the congressman said 1% will be added to the current share of local government units from the national internal revenue taxes. This increase will be allotted to a retirement pay for village officials. The said retirement pay should amount to one-year honorarium but must not exceed 100,000 pesos. Only those who reach the age of 60 and have served the village for nine years will be given this retirement pay. This proposal should inspire village officials to work better. This one is still on politics but it's the biggest news so far. It's up for you to judge if it should be on the first slot. Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Serena was ousted from the Supreme Court by no less than her colleagues. Eight justices voted for the removal of Serena from her post, favoring the Covaranto petition filed by Solicitor General Jose Calida. The said Covaranto petition challenged the eligibility of Serena to serve as Chief Justice. The said decision came as a shock as the Supreme Court was viewed as an institution independent of any political color. It can be recalled that Sereno clashed with President Rodrigo Duterte on many issues including extrajudicial killings. Duterte even said days after the Days of Valor commemoration that he identifies himself as an enemy of Sereno. Thus, many critics viewed the ousting of Sereno as a result of the president's effort to cleanse the high court of those people he considers as his political opponents. If the news of Sereno's removal from office is a big deal, this one is even more surprising. Lawmakers from different political parties condemned Sereno's removal from the high court. According to a report from the Philippine Star Global, among those who expressed their disagreement was Senate President Coco Pimentel a known ally of Duterte and a leading figure in the ruling political party. Well, it shows even those who belong to the ruling group cannot stomach everything that comes from the president's desk, especially if it infringes the rule of law. Speaking of Duterte, the self-proclaimed strongman failed to reach the Philippine rise on May 15, 2018. Instead, the president simply delivered a speech on BRP Davao del Sur, a ship anchored on Casiguran Bay in the province of Aurora. What's the big deal with this issue? So what if Duterte failed to reach the Philippine rice? During his bid for the presidency, Duterte promised that he would ride a jet ski to reach the West Philippine Sea and wave the Philippine flag there as a show of sovereignty. Until now, the promise is still unfulfilled. On top of that unfulfilled promise, the president is keeping mum on China's aggressive militarization on the West Philippine Sea. So, when Malacanang said that Duterte might ride a jet ski during his visit on the Philippine rice, that was the closest thing that he could do to fulfill his seemingly failed election promise. Instead of doing such, the president stayed on BRP Davao del Sur and proclaimed Philippine rice as part of the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone in a Marine Resource Reserve. Here's the funny thing. Duterte's aide Bongo and his son Baste Duterte did ride a jet ski, but the two rode on a jet ski on the waters of Casiguran Bay. On another matter, the new Secretary of Department of Tourism took her oath before President Duterte on Monday. The new Tourism Secretary is Bernadette Romulo Puyat, who replaced Wanda Tulfo Teo. Teo resigned from her post after a controversy involving public funds used to pay an advertisement on her brother's television program, Erupted. 
According to the Presidential Communications Operations Office or PCOO, Bernadette Romulo Puyat served in various government posts prior to Duterte's ascension to power. The same source said that the new tourism secretary is a master's degree holder, an education she obtained from the University of the Philippines. She also taught in the same university for nine years. Alright, speaking of tourism, this lastness is a treat for those who want to visit the Philippines. Are you a Filipino living or working abroad? Then you better grab your foreign friends, bring them here in the Philippines, and join the Department of Tourism's Bring Home a Friend promo. What is this Bring Home a Friend promo? It's a raffle game where Filipino expatriates will refer the Philippines to a foreign friend as a tourist destination. The Filipino will then act as a sponsor who brought a tourist in the Philippines. The Filipino sponsor has to fill up an online information sheet accessible via Department of Tourism website. After filling up the information sheet, the Filipino sponsor can access a special page in the DOT's website and invite a foreigner to come to the Philippines. In turn, the foreigner will receive a notification from DOT. The foreigner must prove that he is traveling to the Philippines by sending his ticket and boarding pass to DOT. After doing so, a coupon number will be assigned to the foreigner and voila! That coupon number will serve as a raffle entry. Winners will be drawn through an electronic raffle. What are the prizes at stake? Filipino sponsors can win a 200,000 pesos worth of gift certificate from Duty Free Philippines as a third prize, Toyota Vios as a second prize, and a Mega World condominium unit as a grand prize. The foreigner invitee can win two round-trip international economy class tickets, plus two round-trip domestic tickets to Davao, plus five-day and four-night stay at Pearl Farm Beach Resort as third prize. Those who will win the second prize will get two round-trip international premium economy, or economy if not applicable, class tickets, plus two round-trip domestic tickets to Cebu, while those who will win the grand prize will get two round-trip international business class tickets, plus two round-trip domestic tickets to Palawan, plus five-day and four-night stay at El Nido Hotel and Resort. You still have more time. The promo is extended until October 2018. Okay, whether we like it or not, here ends this week's recap. Like and follow us on our social media sites, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you'll always be the first to know the latest news in Asia and the Philippines. Let's see each other next week for a new episode of Trending Clips.